whole bunch of gods all at once for the exact same thing. And so now they all are working together for a common cause. And, um, and Atticus goes, okay, who? And Inari says, remember Rebecca Dane? And Atticus says, oh, okay. Now, if you will recall back in Hexed, Atticus hired Rebecca Dane to help out around his bookstore, Third Eye Books, in Hammered, in preparation for faking his own death and and going to Asgard and all this shenanigans that sent a whole shit ton of crap rolling down a hill, um, he actually sold the store to her and and left the store to her to to run and to operate and to manage and to profit off of really. So. Inari basically says, you've got to start going after Loki because Rebecca Dane. Which doesn't make sense to anybody. So, Atticus shifts back to Tempe to go talk to Rebecca Dane. He talks to Hal Hauk for a little while as well. Um... But after that, he goes to talk to Rebecca Dane. And he asks her, Hey, did you ever pray for me? And she went, Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just <laughs> like it's the most normal thing in the world. And he said, well, Okay, what? You know, and here's, here's the key thing about Rebecca Dane is she doesn't subscribe to one religion. She basically subscribes to all of them. Uh, there, she gives a little speech that religion is like fashion. You know, there's different flavors and different styles and different ideas and different whatever. But ultimately, it all serves the same purpose, which is to keep you from walking around naked. I think that's a pretty apt metaphor, actually. So Atticus says, okay, so how many gods did you pray to? And she says, nine. Because nine is a magical number for the uh, the two a day Danon. And he goes, yeah, I know that. Duh. So he says, do you remember which nine gods you prayed to? And she she says very quickly, by the way, it took me ten times of having to like listen and re-listen to this one little audio snippet to get all of them written down. Okay? So here we go. These are the gods that she prayed to. Jesus, Ganesha. Odin, what? Inari, Hobbes, uh, Buddha, uh, someone named Guan Ying, Shango, who is an African Nigerian, I think, Thunder God, um, Perun, and Briad. I had a hard time reading my writing. Yes, so I'm sure, you know, you're going, hey, wait, what? You know. Uh, yeah, so um, this kind of explains why Odin sort of begrudgingly lets Atticus off the hook for his raid of Asgard. Because he's kind of bound to do what this human wants. Because that's kind of why he exists, is because, you know, of human belief and the human belief not only in the divine but in the divine intervention that follows from that belief in the divine so um so yeah so this explains odin and his begrudging alliance with him this also kind of explains why shongo um if you'll recall, in the beginning of Tricked, when Atticus faked his death, when Coyote took Atticus's form and a bunch of thunder gods along with Tyr and Vidar from the Norse pantheon came and killed him, Shango was one of the thunder gods and gleefully hacked him to pieces, mostly because he knew that wasn't really fucking Atticus. But interestingly... We get a lesson about how the Irish Celtic pantheon works 
and and how precious wordplay is to them because Atticus realizes um, that when Briad summons him to Tirnanog, if you'll recall at the beginning of Trapped, he gets summoned to Tirnanog to answer for the question of why he's still alive, because supposedly he was supposed to be dead. What Briad actually says to him is, I was told you were dead. She does not say, I thought you were dead, or I believed you to be dead. She says, I was told, which leaves this which means that she is being honest, but she is also being misleading, which I find fucking fascinating. So after this discovery of all these gods that are basically playing with his life like it's checkers or something, he goes off in the wilderness to think about it for a while, and he has a conversation with Jesus. Again, yes. Remember back in Hammered, he had a beer with Jesus? Well, this time he has tequila. So he and he and Jesus split a bottle of tequila and sort of discuss, you know, what needs to happen going forward. And after this conversation with Jesus, um, Atticus shifts back to the cabin in Colorado where he meets up with Owen, who explains that Fand is the one planning a coup and they do the whole sewing ceremony and uh, go back to Tiernan Oak. So at this point, we pick up the, the collective story, okay? So Owen and Atticus, along with Briad, Govnu, Lukta, and Grenya, and Flittish and Perun, and Monan and McLear, um, they all go to approach and talk to Fand and see if they can work out a piece, only to find that Fand has planned an ambush, has drained power from the earth over a certain portion of land in Tirnanog so that the nobody can draw power from the earth because technically all the two Adedanen are also druids. So they all draw their power from the magic of Gaia. And so now they're powerless and they get attacked by basically every magical creature you can possibly imagine. You've got fairies and pixies and goblins and trolls and God only knows what else. I'm sure I'm missing out a lot. But they start fighting through anyways, trying to trying to get to Fand and 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 work this out. Uh, unbeknownst to Owen and Atticus, uh, Granuel shows up invisible because she is completely and totally covered head to foot in bruises because of her recent shattering but she's healed well enough to actually participate in battle <clears throat> and kind of help out on the side so the battle ensues and then at some point Fand runs off just fucking runs off and things start sort of settling down uh Govnu gets has been killed. Govnu has fallen, and so Briad is standing over her son's body, mourning his death and lamenting what's going on and lamenting her mistakes as a leader in Tirnanog and all that. When off to the side, a blur of color denotes that someone in camouflage is coming up behind Briad. Granuel, still invisible, unbeknownst to anybody else, clonks the person in camouflage, unconscious, which dispels the camouflage binding, only to see that it is, in fact, Fand, who is attempting to kill Briad while her back is turned. Briad, furious with this, turns to attack Fand and kill her while she's unconscious and can't do anything, when Atticus stops her and says, Look, you can't do it this way, Briad. All these magical creatures are still your subjects, and if you kill the person that they consider their queen, they are going to turn against you. So what you have to do is lock her up. You have to craft a prison from which she cannot escape, and you have to lock her up. So Briad initially is very angry at this, but she sees the wisdom in it. And says, okay, and she commissions Owen and Lukta, I think, or maybe it's Grenia, and Flittish to uh, to construct a 
proper prison cell where a uh, fan will be treated kind of, fairly, if not kindly, but she will be kept away from the Fey and the Fey court, and, and hopefully she'll have time to think about what she's done and maybe come to her senses about where her priorities really need to be. After this is settled out, Granuel sneaks up behind Atticus, says, Hey, I'm here. I'm invisible. I need to talk to you. And um, the two of them shift out to Costa Rica, if I recall properly, where they sit down. She dispels the invisibility binding and shows him that she's bruised and that she's broken. She tells him what she's been through. She tells him that Loki can now track her and deduce relatively quickly that Atticus himself is not far behind. And this is very dangerous. And so they sit there and they say, we'll deal with this. And that's how the book ends. Bada bing, bada boom. So that's all I have to say about that I know I usually post these shows on Saturdays I'm sorry I had some technical difficulties and got distracted with a all caps someone <laughs> and um yeah so that's yeah so so I'm posting it now um if you would like to contact me Anywhere on social media, what you need to be looking for is PurpleBecca923. That's P-U-R-P-L-E-B-E-C-C-A-923. That is my username on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. With regards to Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, I always follow back unless and until you send me something inappropriate, in which case you'll be dealt with accordingly. PurpleBecca923 at gmail.com is the email address, and PurpleBecca923.com is the website. Yes! So remember, until next time, learning is fun, education is fresh. So go out there, create what you deserve, and fly with the penguins. Toodaloo!